Moses and Yeda Alsbacher set sail from Bavaria in Central Europe to come to the United States, and they came to Cleveland, 1839. A teacher by the name of Lazarus Cohen from their hometown in Bavaria uh, at the goodbye party for the uh, Alsbachers when they left, uh, Cohen gives them a piece of paper that has three things on it. Number one, a tefillat haderach, a blessing for a, a safe journey. Number two, the names of all the members of the community who they're leaving behind, so that they should A, remember who they were, maybe feel a little bit guilty that they're leaving them behind. And it's three, the third thing is a warning of the dangers that awaited them when they would come to America. Bottom right hand side of the first page. <coughs> Friends, this is Lazarus Cohen to Moses and Yetta Alsbacher, 1839. You are traveling to a land of freedom where the opportunity will be presented to live without a compulsory religious education. Parenthesis, by contrast, here, where you live now, where there is compulsory religious education. Resist and withstand this tempting freedom, and do not turn away from the religion of our fathers. Do not throw away your holy religion for quickly lost earthly pleasures, for your religion brings you consolation and quiet in this life, and will bring you happiness for certain. In the other life. Be careful when you come to America. America is different. America is a land of freedom. And therefore, by definition, you could do whatever you want, and you may be tempted to do things that I don't think would be appropriate for you. And please remember the tradition of your ancestors. America has been wonderful for Jews. Has America been wonderful for Judaism? And thank God, I think things are better now. But I think we are now leaders. This is a session on leadership. We are leaders who are leaders of the Jewish community. We are leaders who care about the Jewish community. We are leaders who wonder why, at whatever meetings we call for Jewish communal activities, where people are not sitting around the table. Why aren't our neighbors sitting around the table? Why aren't our sisters and cousins and uncles and aunts sitting around this table, what can we do to inspire people to choose to become engaged? That, to me, is the fundamental leadership question in 2011. The point of departure, assumption is, this is a world of choice. Pass this back, please. This is a world that's governed by choice, and this is not a 20th century phenomenon. This is not the second half of the 20th century phenomenon. I gave you two examples, one from the 18th century, one from the 19th century. In this country, people can do whatever they want. And when you can do whatever you want, you need to be explained or inspired or educated or challenged to think about particular choices. Why choice X is different than choice Y. Lisa writes in her article, does everybody see the article that we, that we saw? In this article that you will, I'm assuming, share uh, later on, about adult learners and about the different, the plethora of opportunities that people have to spend their time, and how can those who care about substantive adult Jewish learning make a case that uh, somebody who's very busy should choose to spend their time engaged in adult Jewish learning. That's the challenge. You're running a school, you're a leader of a, of a communal institution, uh, you are a rabbi, you are a president of a synagogue, you are engaged in uh, any one of many worthy Jewish causes. Why is it that the same people are sitting around the table all the time? Why can we get people to be 